Do you need a high-end bike-specific torque wrench like the top-of-the-line Park Tool TW5.2? Or is a budget tool like the Handife Amazon Torque Wrench just fine? In this video, I'll compare these two options and discuss their features, the user experience, and of course, the all-important accuracy of both tools. Now, if you have a bike with even remotely performance-oriented components, a torque wrench is an absolutely essential tool to ensure that all your bolts are tightened to the proper torque specification. Now, certainly this is critical with carbon fiber components, but even alloy parts these days are highly engineered and they all come with a prescribed torque specification to avoid damage to the component. Now, the generally accepted narrative is to not cheap out when it comes to tools, especially precision tools like a torque wrench. However, when this Handife quarter inch drive torque wrench was sent to the channel for review, I was actually pretty intrigued as the reviews are really good and despite a price tag of just about $35 US, it offers pretty much everything you'd want in a torque wrench designed for home bike repair. Now, just to be clear, while the tool was sent to the channel at no charge, all thoughts and opinions of this tool are my own. So what's the difference between a budget-friendly torque wrench and a top-shelf torque wrench, really? Are you merely paying for brand recognition with the Park Tool, or is there something fundamentally flawed with the budget option? Well, I'd say the only logical thing to do is to break this comparison down into three categories. The features of each wrench, the user experience of each wrench, and of course the critical accuracy of each tool. So starting with the features, the Park Tool TW5.2 employs a 3 8 inch drive with a torque range of 2 to 14 newton meters, which will cover a good proportion of all bike related work and is really only insufficient for things like crank arm bolts and bottom brackets that do require much higher torques. It's got tightly spaced ratcheting action, so it'll be able to ratchet even in tight spots, which is always a good thing. Now the plastic handle is ergonomic and it feels good in the hand and the torque is clearly displayed through a transparent, easy to read window. The budget hand knife tool, on the other hand, employs a slightly smaller quarter inch drive, yet spans a larger range of torques from five to 25 Newton meters, which is biased a little bit higher than the Park tool. The knurled metal handle is pretty typical for a wrench at this price point, and it's functional. Now, there is a little bit of a trade-off happening here because the Park tool is capable of torque starting at two Newton meters, and while the five Newton meter minimum of the hand knife tool seems pretty close, there are plenty of bolts on a bike that actually do call for torque specs lower than five Newton meters. However, the Park tool also tops out at 14 Newton meters, and there are also plenty of bolts requiring higher torques than this. So while not totally related to this comparison, the limited range is just a fact of life when it comes to torque wrenches, and it's the reason many mechanics have multiple torque wrenches spanning the entire spectrum of required torque specs. Anyways, as far as the user experience, the Park Tool has a really intuitive adjustment handle that only requires you to push the spring-loaded lock knob on the bottom while turning the handle to the desired torque. Now the current torque setting is unmistakably denoted by the display window, which uses a thin red line to denote the current torque value. Now surprisingly, the Handife budget tool also has a pretty easy to use adjustment as this spring-loaded locking sleeve serves a similar purpose as the knob on the Park Tool. You just have to slide it down to unlock turn the adjustment dial and slide it back up into place to lock it. The socket attachment locks the socket in place as with any high quality ratchet and the release button is crisp and effective on both the top shelf model and the budget option. Now I will say this about the hand knife budget tool. The torque values which are printed on the side of the handle require you to follow a little line and match it up with the edge of the rotation handle to set the torque. Now this is pretty common on more budget-oriented tools. Now further, all of the intermediate markings are denoted in inch pounds, so really if you want a specific Newton meter specification, which is commonly specified by bike component manufacturers, it actually makes more sense to first convert the Newton meter value to a corresponding inch pound value, and then set the budget torque wrench to that value, which itself can take a bit of head scratching and some mental math. Now I guess what I'm trying to say is that it would be nice if the scale on the budget offering was biased towards reading in Newton meters rather than inch pounds. But this is admittedly a pretty bike specific request and it does have a Newton meter scale on the back. It's just that the incremental tick marks are specified in inch pounds. So it does make it a little bit tough to set the tool 
using the Newton meter scale. Now with the park tool on the other hand, setting the torque is much more straightforward as the incremental torque values are clearly labeled on the handle in 0.2 Newton meter increments. Furthermore, the main markings on the scale are in easy to read integer values and natively in Newton meters, which is much simpler than the budget option in my opinion. So in my experience anyways, the park tool is undoubtedly a clear winner when it comes to user experience and it represents a well-designed tool with the end user in mind. However, if you're willing to forego the bells and whistles and you just want a bare bones tool that works, then the budget option would be a great fit so long as it's accurate. And that's really the key right there. The budget-friendly hand knife tool would represent a very affordable utilitarian tool if it can accurately specify torques. Now to test this, I have a pretty crude, but in my opinion, a pretty logical setup here. I've got a mark on the handle of each wrench that's exactly seven inches from the axis of rotation, then carefully clamping the wrench into a bench vise as horizontally as possible, I can then hang a 10 pound weight at that mark. Now, by definition, this represents an applied torque of seven times 10 or 70 inch pounds, or in other words, 7.91 Newton meters. Now, in the case of the park tool, which is set to eight Newton meters, that's basically as close as I can get to 7.91, when I apply exactly 70 inch pounds, it actually clicks, which is a bit alarming since it should actually take a little bit more than 70 inch pounds to get it to click. Interesting. Now, when I switch to the budget hand knife tool, it's actually set to 70.4 inch pounds according to the scale. Again, that's the closest that I can get to 70 exactly. Now, it's pretty apparent that when 70 inch pounds is applied, it's really just on the verge of clicking as hanging the weight any further from the axis of rotation immediately engages the click and hanging the weight any closer to the axis does not engage it. Now this to me suggests that the wrench is actually very accurate, perhaps even more so than the park tool. Again, pretty interesting. Now obviously this experiment isn't meant to provide definitive calibration information about these tools, but it certainly offers a glimpse into the relative accuracy of each. In fact, before this, I had never actually performed any type of testing like this, and I always kind of just assumed that I was getting good measurements from my torque wrenches. So it is nice to see that both of these tools are giving me pretty accurate readings, and I'm actually quite surprised that the more expensive park tool is the one that's giving me questionable measurements. In any case, there you have it, a semi-in-depth discussion on a budget versus top-end torque wrench for bikes. So what did we learn? Well, as far as accuracy goes, both are pretty spot on with the budget tool surprisingly edging out over its higher end counterpart just slightly. However, as far as the user experience, I have to give it to the park tool. The more natural scale and the intuitive display make it really easy to set the torque and it really leaves the guesswork out of getting it set up right the first time. Now the budget hand knife tool does take more mental math to get the torque value set up, but at the end of the day, I'm inclined to say that Really, either one will do the job pretty well. Now, I can't speak to any long-term considerations. The Park Tool, for instance, has been regularly used for the better part of a year, while the Budget Hand Knife Tool is brand new. And maybe this would actually explain the discrepancy in accuracy. But in any case, I still can't speak to the long-term repeatability of the budget option at this point. Nonetheless, as budget tools go, I would actually give this Hand Knife Torque Wrench my stamp of approval, whatever that's worth, and I would certainly trust it when working on my own bikes. Now, if on the other hand, you do prefer to put your trust in a known brand and you appreciate all the little things that equate to a nicer user experience, then you'll likely be one to shell out for the higher end park tool. Okay, well, that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed learning something about torque wrenches. As always, thanks for watching and thanks again for subscribing if you haven't already and I'll see you next time.